throughout the Second World War, there are a number of female spies who were executed in brutal and barbaric ways. For the Nazis, they deemed women to have no place on the battlefield, and they saw this as a disgrace against their beliefs. But because of this, many female spies who worked alongside the French resistance were dealt with shockingly. Some inside of concentration camps were thrown into the ovens of the crematorium alive, and the other prisoners would hear the screams of these women. But there was one female spy who was considered a brilliant agent, but like many others, was captured, and inside of Ravensbrück, an all-female concentration camp, she was executed, following a brutal and barbaric torture ordeal. Violette Sabo was just 23 when she was killed inside of the concentration camp, but what is her story? As always, to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. Violette Bushel, as she was born, was initially from France, and she was a daughter of an Englishman and a French woman. Her father was in the British Army and had served in France during the First World War when he met her mother, who was a dressmaker from the Somme region. But during the 1930s, the family then returned to London, and Violette was 11 when the family crossed the English Channel. And she was a young girl who excelled in many different sports, and she was considered a tomboy who was taught to shoot by her father. But she relearned English whilst being at school in Brixton, and she was well liked by her peers, but she often clashed with her father who was strict, and Violette then ran away to France following an argument. She would come back to England and had a number of jobs inside of London, but following the outbreak of the Second World War, Violette worked as part of the Women's Land Army, and she would pick strawberries in Fareham on the south coast, before she became a munitionette inside of an armaments factory in London, making bullets and bombs for aircraft. But she met Etienne Sabo, a French NCO who was of Hungarian descent, and the pair then married after falling in love very quickly. Within less than two months of meeting her husband, Violette was married, and there was a 12-year age gap, and the couple went on honeymoon before her husband went to fight abroad. But following this, she then worked as a switchboard operator in London during the Blitz, and she was then sent for training as an anti-aircraft guard, and she would become a gunner, but it was clear that her career in the war effort would take her further. She gave birth to a child, and she would following this continue to work in factories making aircraft, and she was then told of her husband's death, and at a young age, Violette Sabo was now a widowed single mother of a daughter. But then following her husband's death, she decided to go further and try to avenge her husband by fighting the very enemy that killed her husband, and she was then recruited, or she joined up, to become a member of British Special Operations Executive. This was a spy and intelligence service set up, which would work alongside the French resistance to help liberate France, and they were incredibly well trained and would work behind enemy lines. Violette was recruited by F section, and her fluency in French would allow her to work well behind enemy lines, and she attended an interview, and was selected for training as a field agent in July 1943. She went through a vigorous amount of training, and was given a good report, and she trained in navigation, weapons and demolitions, and she then went to Bewley to learn further skills such as escape and cryptography. The training was the best she was given, and she then underwent parachute jump training, but sprained her ankle during her first attempt, and then she passed the course. It was said that Violette was adored by the men and women of SOE, both for her courage and endless infectious cockney laughter, and that she was a dark-haired slip of mischief. She had a cockney accent, which added to her impishness. Her first mission and deployment was delayed due to her ankle injury, but on the night of the 5th of April 1944, she along with another agent was flown from RAF Tempsford over German-occupied France and she landed in the heart of the Lure Valley. Her cover was that she was a secretary, and she was a resident of Le Havre. Her codename was Louise, and she tried to work out which agents had been arrested by the Germans, and it was found by Violette that the circuit of spies she was investigating had been damaged beyond repair. Sabo went back to Paris, and she would stop off for a bit of light shopping before she reported back to SOE. Then she got back to England on the 30th of April, after around three weeks in France. She was then, after around six weeks, readied for a second mission, and her landing in France was delayed further due to German patrols. But she parachuted back into France, landing in a field, on the 8th of June 1944, following D-Day. Violette Sabo was part of a four-person squad to look into a circuit named Salesman 2, and her SOE commander would spearhead this. She would work with the local Maquis, and with regards to gaining weapons, but within a matter of days of landing, her cover was blown, and she would then be arrested. Early in the morning of the 10th of June, 
Two days after landing, she travelled by car driven by a young Maquis squad leader. The Germans had banned the use of cars by the French following D-Day, and the journey was risky and around 100 kilometres long. But Sabo was armed with a Sten gun and a significant amount of ammunition in case of any problems. She was dressed in a light suit, and they travelled across France and picked up other resistance allies, but the car raised suspicions of the German soldiers. That very day, Helmut Kempfer, a senior SS commander, had been arrested, and would be burned alive inside of an ambulance by the resistance, so the SS were on the lookout for cars and suspicious vehicles. The car was stopped by the Germans, and Violette leapt from the car and opened fire, and armoured cars arrived to help, and Sabo then jumped to gates before trying to run across a field. She managed to run across and get over the stream before she twisted her ankle. She provided others with covering fire, and she fought the Germans for 30 minutes and killed a corporal, and wounded others before she then ran out of ammunition, and she put up a fierce resistance with her sten, but she was then overwhelmed by the Germans, and was taken for interrogation. Violette Sabo then became a prisoner of the SD, the SS Security Service, and for four days she was brutally beaten and was tortured for information, and she refused to hand anything over. She gave over her name as Vicky Taylor, but the SD for some time had known about her actual identity, and what she was up to as an SOE agent, and she was taken to the Gestapo headquarters in Paris, for further torture, and her ordeal was truly horrific. But at this time in the war, the Allies were driving further into France, and the 3rd US Army was heading for Paris, and the Germans would then send their valuable prisoners to Germany. On the 8th of August 1944, Violette Sabo was sent to Germany with other SOE agents, and she was shackled to SOE wireless operator Denise Bloch, and was held with other prisoners on board a train. They were held in tough conditions, and the prisoners then arrived in Germany, and the only food they had been given was bread crusts, and for 10 days Sabo and other women were held in terrible conditions at a transit camp, with no toilet or running water. Following this, she and other SOE women were then sent to Ravensbrück concentration camp, an all-female site where over 90,000 women would die during the Second World War, as the conditions were truly brutal. The women of SOE then got to the camp, where disease was rife, and where the SS guards would violently attack the women, and Violette entered the camp on the 25th of August 1944. For some time she kept up with the camp's brutality, and she was forced to do hard work, but she would protest and would appear not to have built munitions inside of a Heinkel factory, and she did not want to make armaments which would be used against her own country. She was then forced to dig potatoes, and she along with other women were then sent to work at other sites, and she was forced to fell trees in the tough winter conditions at a punishment camp. Many of the women sent here alongside Violette would freeze to death, and she was dressed in only summer clothes, and had no blankets in the barracks at night, and this was a truly horrific ordeal. The women were also assaulted inside of solitary confinement blocks, but then Violette Sabo was sent back to Ravensbrück for her execution. Around the 5th of February 1945, Violette Sabo, who was considered a fawn in the side of the German army, was brought out into the execution alley at Ravensbrück inside the all-female concentration camp. The SS guard, SS Rottenführer Schult, whilst the commandant of Ravensbrück, Fritz Sören, looked on, told her to kneel down. The death sentence for Violette Sabo was read out, and also witnessing her execution was Johann Schwarzhuber, the deputy commandant and a dentist, Dr. Martin Hellinger. Schulte pulled out his pistol, and whilst the death sentence was read out, Violette knew she would be dead in seconds. He shot his pistol into the back of her head, and she was one of a number of female SOE agents who were shot at the same time, there and then, including Denise Block, who Violette had been shackled to before. Her body was then carried to the camp crematorium and was burned. Following her execution and death, after the war, Violette Sabo became the second woman to be awarded to George Cross. The citation stated, Madame Sabo volunteered to undertake a particularly dangerous mission in France. She was parachuted into France in April 1944 and undertook the task with enthusiasm. In her execution of the delicate researches entailed, she showed great presence of mind and astuteness. She was twice arrested by the German security authorities, but each time managed to get away. Eventually, however, with other members of her group, she was surrounded by the Gestapo in a house in southwest France. Resistance appeared hopeless, but Madame Sabo, seizing a Sten gun and as much ammunition as she could carry, barricaded herself inside of part of the house, and exchanging shot for shot with the enemy, killed or wounded several of them. 
By constant movement, she avoided being cornered and fought until she dropped exhausted. She was arrested and had to undergo solitary confinement. She was then continuously and atrociously tortured, but never, by word or deed, gave away any of her acquaintances, or told the enemy anything of value. She was ultimately executed. Madame Sarbo gave a magnificent example of courage and steadfastness. She encountered a brutal end and execution inside one of the most evil concentration camps, and she is remembered today as one of the heroes of the Second World War, who gave her life trying to rid France of the Nazi regime. But like many female spies, Violette Sarbo was sentenced to a horrific and brutal death. Thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe, and once again, thank you so much for watching.